Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so first up we have a lot of clan rats to paint up here, so I've just given them all a quick Xenothor Prime so we can take full advantage of some effects and making it a bit easier to paint up a lot of these miniatures. So we're also going to be using some contrast paints here, and I'm going to be using uh, Griff Charger Grey, uh, Gore Grunter Fur, and Flacier Flesh here for the base colours of our rats. So this is going to be for all of the fur regions, so we'll be painting those up here. And since we're using that uh, contrast paint and with that Zenithal Prime, it's going to give us a lot of depth and shadow into the miniature as well. As well as that, I've also uh, changed out the bases on my clan rats here. Um, it's the same size base. This one here is sort of a pre-made one, which sort of looks like a dungeon tile floor or sort, sort of a sewer tile, sort of the idea I'm going for here, rather than the ordinary base I've got here. So you might want to supplement this out with whatever base you're using for your squad of clan rats. Okay, so once we have all those fur areas complete, we're we'll going to be doing the same thing again with these colours here, which is going to be dark stone, crusted saw, and uh, necrotic flesh here. And we're going to be using this for any uh, leather area. So I'm using these three colours because we want to be uh, varying it up a lot here with our miniatures. I, like I said, I didn't want them all to be exactly the same, but I still want some uh, same colours across the army. So if I, or the squad, uh, they've got here because you get uh, 20 clan rats in uh, a set so i've got to paint up 20 of these at a time and they're just off screen but i am i will be switching to different ones back and forth to show out uh, different points of detail and other areas to add on like you can see here we're using our other color here to paint up the uh, clothes that this one's wearing which is different from the other because they all actually have uh, quite unique sculpts in the, of themselves so it's quite uh, a good idea to switch up some of the colors and not make them all look uh, samey same and then grabbing another color here, uh, as you can see, and another rat, of course. And we're using our crusted saw for this as well. So really getting in. And I'm just picking out the skirt area. So we'll, you want to uh, vary this up across all the miniatures. I'm just picking out sort of the underclothes of each one of these. So it's just going through, picking out with the three colors I'm using here, just switching it between them, sort of picking out randomly or which one I feel looks good on the particular rat at the time. So no real science to it. It's just going around, picking out which one you feel uh, with whatever three colors you want to use here. These are just the three colors that I picked out. Then once we have all those rats picked out with their underclothes, I'm going to come in now with some dark green. And this is going to be for any sort of uh, over overclothes region. So if they're wearing any sort of like jackets or hoods, anything like that, I'm picking out with the green here. And I've gone with um, sort of like um, dark and muted colors, sort of just sort of ones that you would find in sewers, one, clothes that people want to chuck away, which is your browns, your greens. And, you know, sort of give them that sort of silver vibe and they're scrounging for clothes so they're not the super high valued uh, crazy colours out there. So that's why I'm keeping them all sort of a little bit muted but adding in some brighter colours there like I have with the green and now red. And then while we're doing that we're also going to be grabbing our flag bearer here and we want to be using our green on there as well. I'm just picking out one spot. So this one sort of a whole bunch of different sort of uh, cloths and material together to make himself a banner. So just coming around and picking out the areas I want with that to uh, coincide with the uh, army's overall sort of uh, color scheme since it's going with a mainly green color. Then once we have that completed, we're going to come in now with some mahogany brown. And this is going to be used for any handles and shafts on any weaponry. So uh, as you can see, it's quite a bright, vibrant color against all this dark muted colors we've been using so far. So it's going to add in a little bit more interest as well. But you could, of course, just use any brown to do this. I just want to mix it up a little bit so you can definitely see the difference. And I'm going to be painting, of course, like I said, any... Uh, weapon handles and shafts as well as that any shields as well there's a lot of uh, shields that they can choose from so going around picking out all those areas on the miniatures then once we have that complete what i'm doing now is i'm going to come in with some khaki and i'm going to be using this for any straps and wraps on any of our rats here because some, a lot of them don't have shoes of course they're sort of scrounging rats so they've been using a lot of leather wraps as uh, parts of armor and cloth and shoes and bangles and things like that so i'm going to be going around picking out all of these things that they've been using to wrap up with their armor you may want to switch up some colors in here uh, as well i'm just going to go with the uniform uh, khaki color seeing uh, make it sort of like a generic sort of wrap that any town would have 
uh, or something like that anyway, to just keep uh, some parts on the miniatures a little bit cohesive as an army or a unit by themselves. Then once we have all those leather wraps completed, we're going to come in with some neutral flesh here. And this is going to be for all of the tails of the rats. So as you as I said, we've got 20 rats to go through, so it's a lot of tails to pick out. And we're going with a, a fleshy colour here, just to make... As you see, it sort of blends in a little bit with the khaki. But we're going to be uh, mixing that up with some uh, washes to separate them out in colour. So you can see the difference between them. Um, but also, I want to have these rats have a nice fleshy, gross, sort of disgusting tail. And it'll help with the different coloured rats we've got too, to have them all unified with one tail. So it looks like they belong to one sort of clan. Okay, so now we have all their clothes to complete we can now move on to the metal work so of course like i said since we're doing metal work we're going to be needing a metal color so whatever got of your choice i'm using gun metal here and it's going around and picking out all the metal areas on the miniature now uh, there's a lot of different varieties you can make these uh, clan rats in and a lot of them have sort of uh, shackles around them as a sort of like busted out from prison or they've been chained up something like that it's a really cool variety so it's just a matter of going around and looking all over the models for these kind of areas some of them have little daggers on them um, and things like that so it's just a matter of going around and really being careful and picking out all the areas that you can see that are metallic and there's a, of course there's a lot because we've got a whole pack of them to do and one thing I forgot to mention too when we're doing this, we're going to be avoiding any bells on the miniature. Some of them have some bells, and we're going to be using brassy brass on the bells here. Give them a brass bell, really help pop out a bit more colour into the miniatures. So anywhere that you see a bell, there's not many, uh, it's mainly just this um, bell swinging one here, and a couple of other little bells on some of the miniatures. Not too many to pick out here, but it's going to be a good help for adding variety of colour and a bit of contrast by picking out all of these bells in the brassy brass colour. And now we're going to go back to our flag bearer here. I'm going to come in with some deck tan to do this. And this is going to be for the uh, main piece of cloth or part of the banner that we've been using here. So we can uh, give it a nice clean slate and add a symbol onto the banner itself. And as you can see, I've used the other paints here, including the little bells on there, to really help pop out the color on there and really make it separate out from the other piece. Since he's a flag bearer and he's representing his clan. So we want to get it as nice and bright and vibrant with this one as we can to really make him stand out on the battlefield okay so once we've picked out that banner it's time to move on to some ivory and what we're going to be doing with that is we're going to be picking out all the teeth of the rats so nice amount of uh, rats to pick from here we've got 20 in the pack of the clan so a lot of teeth to pick out and got these nice big ones and they sometimes they have a little uh, inner one poking out as well and they have various different states of their mouth opening not every single one has their mouth open as well so you're not going to have to do every single clan rat but just be aware of all the teeth that you can see on there and pick them out with the ivory then once we've picked out all the teeth of our rats we're going to come in now with some mephiston red and what we're going to be doing with this is we're going to be using them for their eyes so give them nice red beady eyes hopefully add to the creepiness factor and it's just being very very careful they're very small beady eyes so switch to a fine tip brush if you need to to really help with picking out the eyes okay and then once we've done that it's time to come back to our banner flag bearer here and we're going to be using some matte black to do this and what i'm going to be doing is placing a symbol on here and this is sort of my first real time using freehand and especially copying a symbol here so uh being very very steady and cautious here um so hopefully it turns out how i want it to and what i'm doing here is i'm copying uh the sort of scaven clan symbol that you see a lot a lot on the scaven here just using a bit of reference to get this as good as I possibly can. Switching to a very fine tip brush so I have a lot of control using just a very little bit of paint on it. Just very slightly sketching it out before bulking it out with the subsequent strokes and getting it as close as I can to the symbol of the Skaven. Okay, so once we've got that symbol on the flag complete, we're going to come in now with some Agrax Earthshade. And we're just going to be keeping everything nice and simple here. We're going to be applying the Agrax Earthshade to all of the clothing as well as the the wraps the tail um even over some of the fur if the fur is looking a little bit too light and as well as the shaft of the weapons just avoiding the middle for now we're keeping it nice and simple because i have a lot of these rats to paint up and so will you if you're uh, following along with me here so we want to keep it simple but effective so going over with uh brown wash and we can hopefully uh get all of these washes done 
uh, nice and quickly and really add some uh, depth and griminess because like like i said i want them to be sort of semi-realistic living in the sewers and looking all grimy so giving them all overall wash with the brown is going to help add to that effect then once we've given all our rats a complete wash we're going to come on with some seraphim sepia now and we're going to be using this over our flag and over our teeth as well so giving them a nice sort of yellowy uh, nasty look as well as that i'm also going to be applying that over the bells to really help um emphasize that a little bit as well and like i said we want to be doing that over the flag make it look all grungy and uh, nasty and really hopefully add to the effect like they found these things in sewers and and uh, gutters and things like that because they're an army that's being cobbled together out of uh, random bits and pieces and i really want to hopefully bring that effect out in my painting then once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing now is we're coming in with some Gulliman flesh. And what we're going to be doing with that is we're going to be applying it over all of our metal areas. And this is going to give it a very brownish, tarnished, uh, rusty effect pretty much immediately, as you can see here. And it's going to really help out with the effect uh, that I'm trying to go for, which is making all their weapons sort of rusty and old and decayed and stuff like that. Um, so I really want to rust these things up and make them look like they found them and cobbled together and made them uh, very, very roughly and crudely. So going around all of the middle areas and picking them out to give it that nice aged effect. Then once that's completely dry, we're going to come in now with some dry rust effect from our Army Painter here. And it's just a matter of going in and sort of stippling it slash dry brushing it onto the areas to really build up that orange rust effect. It comes out really nicely uh, once you build it up uh, slowly. And you can see by giving it that base coat with our uh, Gilliman flesh just beforehand, it's really going to help add to the effect that these things are really old and decrepit and rusty. And these, these things have been lying around in the sewers for years before they made weapons out of them. Then once we have all that rust effect on there, it's time to come in with uh, some shining silver, a nice bright uh, shining metal colour, and just come in and pick out very crudely the rough sharpened areas and any highlights that you want to give. So I'm not going to go so much with the highlights because I want to keep them nice and dark and dingy, but I'm going around and just picking out a lot of the very sharpest areas that would be constantly worn or used, so like on the spikes and on the edge of the shield for bashing. And things that they're fighting to really give the effect like these are the only parts on the weapon that are used and they don't take care of anything else it's just because of overuse that these things are shiny And with all that complete, we have finally finished cleaning up our Skaven Clan Rats from the Warhammer Age of Sigma game by Games Workshop. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. Whether you want to follow along with what I did here, or you just want to use my video for some inspiration and in painting up your own miniatures. So with all that said guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.